itu nomor aja. Hello, I don't know if you can see my screen. Uh, yes, yeah, I can see that. Thank you. Okay, I think uh, we can start the presentation. Let me put start in the chat. Okay, so thank you all uh, for joining uh, today. I think today we are having the last session. So we're looking at the last chapter uh, of the book, uh, which is about uh, quartile formats. Um, this uh, discussion for today will be like a follow up uh, to what we learned last week, because last week we look at uh, the various uh, structure of a quartile document, which always have the YAML, just as Tim described last week. Uh, we have some code chunks in which we can put some code and also text uh, in the document. So, but uh, today's uh, discussion, uh, we'll be looking at uh, uh, the various uh, output formats in which we can get uh, from Quarto. We'll be looking at the Word documents, we're looking at PowerPoint, uh, BIMA slide, and also the more advanced uh, Reveal JS uh, presentation, which is still HTML. Uh, but we can rather style this uh, presentation using some SAS uh, variable that is uh, rather than we write in direct CSS code, we will see how we can use SAS variable, which is the SCSS. So for like the introduction part of the book, uh, they like said, uh, uh, every quarto document, you always have the default uh, title. Uh, yeah, they choose to use diamond size and the default format, so we can just see, then we can now render that document into any output format in which we press specify. We can do Quarto, uh, call it Quarto Render, then we call the name of the file, just as we name the file, then we can specify uh, the output format. So let's quickly see how we can do that. So let's quickly see. So once we are in our studio, we just click on File, uh, we click on uh, Quarto Documents. So once uh, we click on Quarto Documents, uh, it's going to take some uh, a while. So we can say demonstration. So we give it a title. Uh, the author from here they specify that the author the author is optional. So we can choose to the default is always set uh, to to HTML, but we can use Word. But they have a slight note here that we what we need to have latex installation or the tiny text to convert uh, to PDF. Uh, we can also output it to Word. Uh, the default engine, just as we learned last week, is always uh, the NIT R uh, because the NIT R is going to meet uh, this document, is converting it uh, to a Markdown document. Then Pandoc will now pick that Markdown document and transfer transports it to the different output formats. So we just click on, we can choose on create, we can click on create, or if you want an empty template, we can say create empty document. But in this case, I'll leave uh, everything as it is. So I'll just say create. So once I create that document, uh, we have a template. So I'll say control S to save it. So I give it a name, demon, demonstration. One.qmd, the extension of the file, you always see it is dot qmd, which is a quarto document. The default, the former previous one we used to have dot rmd, which is an R markdown. But since we are using the most latest version, we are going to always, the extension always going to be uh, dot qmd. So the next thing is for us to, we can choose to render it within our studio here. Okay, so, but if we do not want to do that, let's use a command, Quato, Quato, then we have Quato, Quato render. So the Quato render, we need to give it the inputs. What do we want to render is name them on demonstration one, dot uh, QMD. So we need to now give it a output format. So the output format here, we can give it, we can output this uh, 
the default is always HTML. We can choose to output this. We can say I need a Word document dot doc, docx. Okay. I can say I also need an HTML document. I can also say I need a PDF output, also PDF. So let's say I need the three output formats on a go. So we can just run it. It will take a while for Al to compile the whole document. It's going to give us both a Word document that is named demonstration. It's going to give us a PDF document and also HTML document. Can you all see my font? Is it clear? Yeah, yeah, that it, it's good. Thank you, all you family. Yes, so we can see here that we have demonst demonstration one.html, which is an HTML document. We have demonstration one.docx, which is a Word document. We have demonstration one.pdf. We can see that we have uh, the three output formats. So let's just look at the HTML output first. I say I can view it either in my editor. Let's view it in our studio window here. Sorry. So let's view it in the web browser because this is an HTML document. So let's view it in the web browser. We can see that it's actually the document. Okay. We can see it's the demonstration document. So we can go back to the our studio. Okay, we can look at also the Word documents. So this is, uh, so this is the Word documents. We can see is the same example. Is the same example in which I am working on. Is this the Word documents? Uh, uh, this is the PDF documents. We can see that is the same example. We compile, we have seen that we have gotten the word, we have gotten the PDF, and uh, we are also seeing the output format uh, in HTML. So I don't know if there are any questions before I proceed. No, that, that's good, thank you. Okay, so we have seen that uh, it's very useful for us. We can have a default uh, Quarto document in which we have created. We can use uh, this function, which is Quarto, Quarto render. We pass in the inputs and we just specify the outputs that we want to see. So then a Quarto uh, is, going to, uh, is going to render the document into that specified output. In this case, they will run, they render it uh, to both Word and also the PDF. So those are two outputs, but the example I showed, I showed how we can render uh, that document into both Word, PDF, and also HTML. Uh, for output options, so there are several outputs uh, options in which we can specify in the YAML file. There are several output formats. We can choose to put uh, the table of contents. We can set it to be true. So in this case, when we render the document, it's going to display uh, the table of contents. We can also choose to say table of content floats. It's just like a floating table of contents that means if we have a long list of table of contents, so the, it can be, is floatable, it can collapse so that once we click on, once we click on any item in that table of content, the R will just take us to, uh, to, that, to, that, uh, to that particular section of the documents in which uh, we are working on then. Uh, we can check for what we want to uh, uh, view in that uh, document. I think this is, uh, this, uh, this output, this uh, options, is only uh, uh, it only works perfectly when we are dealing with the the HTML uh, output. But in in Word, in Word uh, or in PDF, you cannot uh, we cannot easily navigate the documents uh, with the table of but the table of content will always be there, or we cannot easily uh, navigate within those uh, documents. We can also specify within the YAML in this case, uh, we are given the formats, uh, the output formats, which is HTML, 
means that it, the default is always HTML. We can set the table of contents to be true. Uh, we can also say table of content floats should be true. PDF, we set it to the defaults. And docx, which is for Word, we say it should be default. Then if we specify the YAML in this format, so in that case, if we want to render these documents uh, into uh, the three output formats, so we just need to use this code. We just need to pass, run this code, Quato, Quato render, we pass in the input file, okay, which is always a Quato document. Then we specify the output format, uh, that the output format uh, should be all. So when we specify that the output format is, going, is all, so Quato is going to, is going to render uh, that uh, document uh, to the three output, both Word, PDF, and also the HTML. We are going to see those three outputs as our, uh, but may I always prefer this, the approach in which I show where I use Quato, Quato render. Uh, then I create a character vector of the three output format in which I want to see, then uh, Quato is just uh, going to, uh, do the rendering of those. It's going to render uh, those uh, documents uh, into the output format in which I've specified uh, documents. So in this case, uh, they specified that is not only PDF, Word, or HTML outputs in which we have. There is also the open document text, uh, uh, open document text, but some of these uh, documents are Hardly, we hardly work with them, but I've worked with uh, the GitHub flavored Markdown, which is the .md. Uh, or if we are working with Python, then we have interactive uh, Python notebook, which is like our uh, Jupyter notebook in which we can interact, which it is very compa well compatible with uh, the Quato, because Quato, it works, it doesn't work with only R, it works with both Python, work with both Julia, and some other programming uh, language show. So in our uh, global options, maybe we want to specify, we do not want, we are working with uh, stakeholders and these stakeholders in which we want to send our reports to, uh, they might not have uh, maybe programming background. Then it's, and in that case, it's not useful that we, we are sharing the documents with them alongside uh, with the code, then we can set a global option. And in that global option, we can specify that execute. Then when we say echo, we say echo, uh, we set it as false. So when we do this in the global option in the YAML, then if we are rendering the documents, it's going to show only, it's just going to show only the outputs. It's not going to show uh, the code. Uh, in which we use in running the analysis because uh, the stakeholders are the, they are mainly interested in the results that they are not interested in the code behind uh, the analysis. So we can set a global option and that global option is going to turn uh, everything off. Uh, we can also use these other options uh, where we say the code, we set the code uh, to be true. So when we set the code to be true, uh, once we render the document, the code is going to be hidden. We can just click on the code and just copy it. Once we click on copy, uh, let's see that. Let's see how this is implemented in Quato, the example we are working on. Okay, so I just need to put this here. Okay. Save this. So let me render this time around. It's going to render it to HTML. Okay, so we can see. Okay, so, so we can see that we are not seeing uh, the code. Uh, code two we can see that the code is off in this case. Let's look at source. Sorry, I missed something. 
Okay, save this. Yeah, I think in some of the chunks it had put echo equals false. So where echo yes. wasn't false, you see the code, but where echo is false further down, it yes. hides that code. Yes, 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 yes. True, set it to true. So I think okay, you can see that when we set the code to true, we can only see this copy to clipboard. So when we copy to clipboard, we can paste here, we can see that that is the code, which is two plus two times two, which is four. So it goes once we set code equals to true, once we set the code equals to true. Once we over around at the left, right hand side, once we over, you can say copy to clipboard. So uh, we are not going to actually see the code. We can just see, we can actually copy this and paste in our clipboard. And that is where we can see, that is when we can see the code uh, behind that. Uh, we can also set, uh, uh, we can also set the code fold uh, equals true. So let's see uh, what that option is going to be. Code, code fold equals to true. So, and render it, which is another options. So once we have code fold, you can see that the code is going to uh, fold. We are folding the code down. When we click on the code, it's going to show us the code one plus one. That is what we input there. Uh, yeah, it's going to show us two times two. But I prefer, I prefer setting code equals true. So once I set code equals true, so that the code will not show in the outputs. But once you over around there at the top, you can just say copy to clipboard. You will be seeing copy. Uh, to clipboard because it's not a code fold. That means it will fold uh, the code in which if you click on it, it will show the drop down where we can still see the actual code uh, behind uh, the analysis. But I always prefer code fold or I, or I remove the entire code in the entire document. I will not show the code at all. I'll just show uh, only the outputs. I don't know, are there any questions? Before I proceed, proceed. Okay. So the next part is talking about uh, presentations in Quattro. So, like in Quattro, we have three different type of presentation. We have the more advanced uh, presentation format, which is Reveal JS, which is a HTML presentation uh, with Reveal JS. We have PowerPoint, we can still get our PowerPoint. We can also still get our Bima, which is a PDF presentation with LaTeX uh, Bima. Okay, so, uh, uh, but for today, I will sp spend more time on the more advanced because this is what me, I almost use in almost all my presentation. I prefer uh, the review uh, JS because uh, this review JS, we can style, we can style, that's uh, our presentation using uh, using some uh, CSS code, some CSS uh, SAS code. The same thing with the, our default HTML, we can still style it to suit our own uh, our own needs. So we'll just see an example. I have a working example in which I, I'm looking at. Uh, we have presentation.qmd. So I'll just take you through a walkthrough uh, what we have here. So the team, I'll leave it as, I'll remove this for now. I'll still come back to that for logo. I'll remove this. CSS, I'll remove this. Chris, Otto, I'll remove this. Save this for now. Then talk about, uh, why is it? Okay, so that I can talk about what I have for now. Or let me leave the team. 
okay? But in this case, I want to remove the custom. I want to remove this, so leave it as default. Leave it as default, okay? So this is our YAML. So I have my title. I have the format, which is Review.js for the benefit of those people. Uh, so once we come to click on file, so let me show you how I arrive here. You click on file. Okay, we go to new file. Okay, we look at, we have Quattro uh, presentation. So we click on Quattro presentation. Okay, so the default is always uh, review JS, but we have Bima, we also have PowerPoint, okay? So we just need to give it a title. Uh, the author, we can see that the author is always optional. You can just put your name there and we can choose to create or we can choose to create an empty document. So once we create that, it's going to give us this structure. So we can, or we can add more features into that slide to improve the look of that slide. So for the team, I'm leaving the team as default, okay? Uh, for other options, other arguments, I leave it blank. So for the execute shown mode, I turn this off for now. I'll come back to that. Editor is visual because we want to, once we edit, we want to see how it happened. It, it changes real time. So once I render that, so let's see the default output in which Review.js will bring. We can see the default presentation that is not really good, but it's still a starting point. The slide is nice. Uh, we can go into speaker view where I say, once I am in my house studio, I just press S if you're on window, it's going to start a speaker v presentation mode. So I can present in this way. I can move to next slide. I can move to next slide. Okay. So there is always a drop down menu here. Okay. We can see it's a presentation demo. Quattro, we can look at tools. Uh, we can see that full screen. We press F. We can go to speaker view with S. We can go to a slide overview with O. We can export this slide to PDF with E. We can go to the keyboard help by using a question mark. We can look at the slide overview, which will just give us a rundown of all the slide in which I have in my presentation. So I stop this. Are there any questions uh, for now before I proceed? No, no questions, thank you. Okay, so for the team now, I want to go into the team. Quato has a different team, I think around or about 12 different team options. So for the year, so I want to use a solarized team, which is one of the Quato team. Then I want to use a, I want to style this document with a custom dot SCSS which I have created here. If you check here, I've created a CSS file in which I want to use uh, to style uh, this presentation. Okay, so for the fonts, uh, we are using both Lato and Sans Serif, which is the fonts I'm using. So for the colors, all the colors, I say for the body background, the background color, I use this X color code. So for the body color of the text, I use this X color code. For the link color, this is the X color code I'm using. Uh, for the presentation form size root, it should be 40 points. Uh, for the headings, so for the headings, uh, we are using the link Gothic Sans. Uh, for presentation heading color, we are using this. So we can just specify different uh, CSS rules uh, in which we can use uh, to style our document. So for more updates, I think before the end of this, I will post a GitHub link. And that GitHub link, you can see all the CSS uh, styling in which we can use to style our presentation because I got uh, some of this code from uh, that GitHub repository for uh, Quato uh, uh, Dev. 
I'll post the link in the chat before we end uh, the presentation. Yeah. So, so now team, I am now applying that styling custom CSS style when I apply uh, that team to the presentation. Let's see uh, the outputs. We can see where we, are, we came from, okay? We can see that we have been able to improve our, our slide. I've, we have been able to improve our slide because if you look at the custom S, we say the body background, we gave it this color, we can see that that is a background uh, we have applied there. Uh, we can say that the body color, this is what we gave. The link color, if there is any link, this is the color uh, that we gave for the link. We can see that this is it. This is the link. This is the color. Uh, body color of the text. So the text, we say it should be white. We can see that that is exactly what we are applying uh, to the slide. Uh, for the headings, so this is the heading color. This is the heading which is what we applied uh, to the slide. For the code block, we also apply this color. Okay, so go back to my demo. So for the highlight style, we, I choose to use uh, ally. So for the transition, I use fade. So once we apply those rules to the slide, uh, what do we have? So once we apply those rules to the slide, we have this. We have this output. So let's say we want, I'm not satisfied with that background color. I can change it from here, okay? I can pass in another X color code. We can just pass in any X color code. Okay, so when I save it, okay, then I come back here and I render it. You will see that the background color is going to change based on the CSS code in which I define. You can see it that it changed, but the slide is not uh, good. Okay, so the type, the heading color, it affects the heading color. So that is how we can just change. We can use another color save it, then render the Quattro presentation again. Okay, so we have this now. Okay, so that is how we can easily manipulate uh, with our presentation. Uh, we can choose to show the code in the documents. Okay, eval, true, we can freeze it. Uh, but, uh, we can also choose to use a logo. We can, I have a logo in which I have, def I have put here. This is a logo of a cat that I want to put in my, at the foot, at the top, bottom, uh, left, right of the slide. Then before I call this CSS, let me comment it. When I render it, uh, we discover that the logo the logo is not showing full, so I have to go back. Uh, we can see that the logo is very small. We cannot really see uh, what is in that logo. So I have to use this other code, uh, which is the logo the CSS, which is another CSS code, dot reveal slide logo, where I set the height to be 100 pixel. Okay, I set the width of the image to be 100 pixel. Then the maximum width on set, maximum height on set. So once I apply this rule, when I apply this CSS rule to the slide, let's see what we are going to get. So once I apply that CSS rule, we can see that we can now see, uh, we can now see that, oh, this is a logo in which I'm working on. Uh, we can move, we can move. We can move, we can move. Then we can also add a footnote to this presentation. Foot. Sorry. 
I can add a slide number True. show slide number, which will be all the slide I add. Also I have a chalkboard. I want to add a foot, footer. So add the footer, demonstration of reveal just presentation. So I save it. So I want that to be at this position at the bottom of this slide. So once I render this, you can see that footer in which I had the air. But if you have, maybe if you are going for a workshop, uh, if you are going for a workshop, you can just, once you get the URL of the slide in which you are presenting, you can put that URL at the footer, put the logo there. So I just add chalkboard, which is what I added, toggle chalkboard. So for toggle chalkboard that I set to true, we can have this chalkboard in our presentation where I can draw my chalkboard. So I can do some set for illustration of, well, of the talk I'm giving, I said to, plus uh, two equals to maybe four. Okay, so I can do some a lot of stuff. I can remove the chalkboard. I can say, okay, I want to have, I want to have uh, this pen. I can also do my explanation. So two plus two equals to equals to four. So and that future, what is bringing in that future? When I set chalkboard to be true, it's going to put a chalkboard in our presentation. Uh, it's going to ensure that there is a chalkboard in our presentation. So, but there are some times in which we want our slide, once we, we want our slide to keep on running, we don't want to be controlling our slide uh, uh, during a presentation in that case, is good to set slide, auto slide. We set it to every two seconds. Then we can also set the looping to be true. So once we add in that argument to Quato, so let's see what Quato is going to do with this uh, presentation. So it's just going to be running. So once it's true, it's going to run to the next slide, true is run to the next slide, true, run. But when it's reach the end of the slide, it continue again, but we can, we can set that looping to be false. So once we set that looping to be false, if you set the looping to be false, we want to stop that looping. So maybe when we get to the end of the slide, I think the slide should end there. So once the presentation, we get there to the end, so now we are at the end. So we have the auto slide mode has gone. So we are now at the end of the presentation. We can see that the slide stopped. So we can, but we can continue. We can start it again. This one is very useful. Maybe we are going uh, for a workshop. We are giving a talk and we don't want to be controlling our slide. We can just set everything by default. So as the first slide coming, we know the number of maximum number of time we are going to use uh, to, to go give a rundown for the entire first slide. Then we have time everything. So that is how uh, our presentation is going to go. But there are some time in which we are making presentation online. And we want people online, once we change our slide, uh, we want them to also follow through. Let, there be, let them follow through what's, uh, what we are doing. So in that case, we can set uh, the multiplex uh, to be true. So once we set the multiplex to be true and we render this document again, it's going to create another slide, which is going to be presentation.qmd uh, is going to create another slide. It's going to drop another slide here. It's going to create a two presentation slide presentation speaker.html, which is the actual one we should make our presentation with. So, but this other presentation HTML, we can share this other one with stakeholders for viewing said that I want to view it online, but we use this uh, for presentation. So that once we change our slide, move from one slide to the next, we need the 
our user to follow through how the slide deck so that they will know, oh, we are, we are now in the second slide, we are now in the third slide, we are now in the fourth slide, we can use uh, that argument. But for people that are visually impaired, in which uh, that we want to give a make presentation with them for them, so we can set the slide slide tone. Okay, we can set this slide tone, set it to true. So once we do that, uh, we render the document. We are going to see that we are going to get. Uh, we are going to get a sound. So once we give that sound, means that we are in the next slide. Once we move to the next slide, it's going to give us, it's going to make a sound. It's going to beep. Each, each slide we step into is going to give us a beep, which is very useful so that the visually impaired people, they will know that, oh, we are now in the next slide, it's now in the next slide. So that uh, option is, uh, is very useful. For that, I set it to false. Okay, so I don't know if there are any questions so far about the styling uh, of our documents. So let me look for the GitHub repo and post. Let me look for the GitHub repo. So we say Quato, Quato documentation. Okay, go to Quarto documentation, go to Quarto guide. Okay, we are in presentation mode. And presentation mode, I'm looking at Review.js. So I'll just scroll down. Scroll down. Though I will still come back to this command. Just scroll down. We are scrolling down. Where am I? Go to review your team. So the team, just as I said, these are all the team in which we have in Reveal.js, but we can also create our own custom team to, if you, and for us to create our own custom team, this is how we have to create it using a custom.scss. So this is the GitHub repository uh, that I'm trying to search for where we can, okay, this is it. Is it so? Just copy, copy link address, and paste in the charts. Yeah. So this is the link where we can get. Where we can get all. We can just open it. Okay. So once we open it, we can see all the. Team, the CSS team, which I showed you, Solarize SCSS, Sky SCSS, we can just pick any one target specific elements in our tag, uh, Quarto documents. So we, let's say beach. Okay, so we can see that it's importing some Google fonts. Good. So we can see that it's important some Google fonts. The fonts uh, is still a lot of fonts. Colors, the background color. So if you are not satisfied with that, we can change it. We can look for any X color code that has a very good background that, oh, I say, okay, I want my slide to have this background. Then we can now use that X color code here. So these are the headings. We can see that the the default fonts, you can see the fonts there. Presentation, most should be uppercase. Presentation fonts, so we can change a lot of this. We can move, we can copy. That is, that is what I mean is that we can copy one formatting from this team. 
try to use it to modify another team. Then we create our own custom dot uh, scss. Then we apply it to the YAML of our uh, Quarto documents to style our presentation to make our presentation uh, to have a very good to have a very good uh, look. So let me go back uh, to the notes. So we have looked at the review JS slide. So they also talk about uh, interactivity. That's just like the HTML document. So we can have interactive uh, interactivity within our Quarto document because we can even embed a leaflet map, okay, in our Quarto document. So and we know that this leaflet uh, map uh, is going to be interactive, but in the presentation in which I was given, so I can still go back to that presentation. So let's see how I, how we can embed this presentation. So for me to get a new slide, I just need to put a pound sign. Okay, so I call it maps. Okay, so I add a chunk, paste that code here, save it, then we render this document. Error. Okay. We can't put it here. What is the output format? Wait. Oh, it's supposed to work. This is presentation mode. Can it all? Uh... Add HTML caption. Okay. So we just put, let's see this, which will be a new slide. Oh, failing, cut this, go back to my demonstration QMD, which the output format I know. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay, so this is what I did wrong. The formats. Okay, I said the format should be reveal JS. So since I said the format should be reveal JS, I was now putting an interactive map. So Quato does not know how to render. So I should put it here since the format here, I've set it to be HTML. So let me use this to render that map. Did it render? Demonstration QMD. Demonstration one HTML in editor. Sorry. Demonstration one in my browser. It's not running, why? I agree, leaflets. Let's see. The leaflet map is working here. Why is it not working for me? What did I did wrong? Comment this out. What did I did wrong? Format should be HTML.
Mato. Mato render. Mato render. Inputs should be demon. Stration one plus QMD. Output formats should be. Oh, I don't HTML. think you've got the S in demonstration in the file name, are you, Femi? Yeah. Is that typo? Yeah, I think you know you've got oh, demonstration yeah. one. You spelt it with the S when you said quarto render, yeah. but if you look at the file name at the top, you've missed the S there. Is failing why? Let's see what the documents Wait and see. So copy these templates. Don't save and paste here. Okay. Send add HTML caption. Where? Where is the HTML caption coming from? Within from line. I think that chunk's all right because it because runs. If I run, chunk, doesn't it? If I should run this, it's going to it's going to display the map. Okay. It's going to display the map in our studio. This is the map I want to render. Hmm. is the map but it's now complaining that we need to add a caption for html which i don't know it's the map i want to render Error. It needs it even without error. So I'll see where the problem is coming from. Set a file. Oops. Don't evaluate that code. Where, where is the problem coming from? So what I'll do, demonstration one. So let me try and delete all these files. Not because it's trying to render it as a presentation and it doesn't work in presentations or something. Yes, let me delete those files. Still failing. Mm. 
So maybe I will just skip that so that I will not waste much time because this is already six o'clock. I'll come back after that. So, but normally this is supposed to be able to be displayed in our normal uh, output. So we can have uh, this interactivity even within uh, our Quarto documents. So we can also have embedded diagraph. These are all these uh, packages. They are mainly used for interactive uh, visualization in R, like diagram R, which is very useful to draw some flow charts. So they also talk about shining, that even within our uh, Quarto documents, we can embed a shiny app, which is an app in which we can use to uh, communicate our those uh, stakeholders. So within the YAML, we just need to specify that the server, the server should be shiny. So then we now run our library shiny to initialize the shiny app within our document. So these are basically text inputs, which input ID is name, the label is what is your name. Uh, we have some numeric inputs, input ID is age, the label is how old are you, we have NA minimum is zero, maximum is 150 years. So once we render, render this document, we are just going to see this. Uh, what is your name? How old are you? Where would the user just need to uh, pass in some inputs? Basically that we know that uh, in a Shiny app, require both we developing the UI, which is the front end, then we also have the server side, which is the back end. The server side, that is where we have, have to write the actual code in which we can use uh, to, that is running the Shiny app. Then we just need to call Shiny app. We pass in both the UI and also the server uh, to start uh, the Shiny app. So, but they do recommend that uh, if, we want to, if we want to learn more about Shiny, so we need, I think there's a book club in which I am also participating in, which about uh, mastering uh, Shiny. So, we, uh, the, which it goes in depth, uh, that would give you the best in depth, the good, the, the con all the skills, all the concepts in which we know, need to uh, grab. Uh, to develop our web app. So we can also, Quato also supports our website. We can build websites using Quato and also we can write books, even thesis uh, using uh, Quato. So uh, we, just, uh, we just need to specify uh, in the YAML, we need to uh, give it uh, the right structure but the good thing about this is that uh, our studio, we don't need, our studio will always give us a boiler template that we can use. We can follow through those templates uh, to maybe develop our websites, to write our books, write blogs. So what we do, if you come to a project, you go to new projects, if you have installed BookDAO or Quato, so once we go to there, we can see that we have a new directory. So we can see Quato projects, which is, we have Quato websites. If you want to build a website, we have Quato blog. If you want to build a blog, uh, Quato book. If you want to write a book about uh, Quato, so the, we can, uh, my website in which I built before, it was a developed using blog down but now I have transferred everything back uh, to Quato. Now my, my new site, I'm using a, a Quato website. So, which is very, which looks very nice. Then I style uh, the website uh, using custom uh, SCSS file to start customize uh, the look of my sites. So, uh, the last part, I think uh, there are some other formats in which they do, do talk about uh, in the book. Uh, we, can, we can write journal articles. And for the journal articles, I think there is a good uh, uh, template. There's a good template where they talk about some journal articles. Uh, uh, we can also write quarter documents in Jupyter Notebook, which is 
I Python notebook. Uh, we can also write quarto dot uh, format for HTML. So I think uh, that is uh, everything uh, about uh, communication parts because we about communication. So we have seen that uh, in quarto, just like our previous R Markdown before, I used to write a lot using R Markdown, but now I, I have switched entirely everything I'm writing. Is always I always use uh, Quato a lot. So all my write-up is now in Quato, which is the modern framework of what of communication in R. So I don't know, are there any questions? So we have covered all for the book. I thank you all for joining. It has been an amazing time going through the entire uh, 30 chapter. Uh, I don't know if there are any comments. No, well, I'd just like to say thank you very much for taking us through the book, Olio Femi. It, you know, it has been amazing. Okay, so I've really enjoyed it.